What's up, YouTube? Mike with Mike's Manga Hunt here, back again, and it's a new year, and maybe you want to pick up manga collecting as a new hobby. Maybe you're looking for something different to do, or you want to start getting into anime and reading a bunch of stuff. So it could be definitely a little bit overwhelming at first. There's a lot to choose from, a lot of stuff kind of like surrounding the hobby. So I figured why not share a few tips and tricks I've learned along the ways. I've been really excited to shoot this video for a long time, so I'm not going to waste any more time. And without further ado, let's get started. Right, so I started collecting manga two years ago, starting in March. And I know when I first started, I didn't really didn't have like a kind of like a guide to go on. I kind of just like went off on my own and kind of just like got myself super overwhelmed and like crazy about everything. So um, I figured it would always be nice to have kind of one of these like starter tips videos. I know if I had one, uh, I think I would have started a lot smoother than I did. Um, so I found a few things that I kind of want to discuss and want to talk about based on my own personal kind of experiences. And hopefully some of these tips can help you guys out if you're interested. And if you know, hopefully you learned something new today, I guess I want to say. So without further ado, let's see what I got. Right. So number one thing, and perhaps probably the biggest thing I wish I knew two years ago when I started uh, was don't try to collect everything. Um, when I started, I was very, very new to just anime in general. At least I was taking a lot, took a long break and I just wanted to like read everything. I was like, oh, One Piece and, and Naruto and, and One Punch Man and Jujutsu Kaisen and, and Chainsaw Man and Spy Family and, and, and then, oh, Goodnight Poon Poon, that's good. And all these like different series is, and I, I started just picking up everything that I could see. And what I found out what happened was that a lot of that just didn't get read. Um, I can know, for example, I picked up eight volumes of One Punch Man and eight volumes of Platinum End. Um, very early in my like manga collecting and to this day two years later I have not read a single one yet and uh, especially a series like Platinum Man just does not interest me at all like in reading at this moment like I really just don't want to do it I have no desire but I have the volumes anyway um, what I've also learned to to go inside with the don't collect everything I learned it's easier to make a list start very very small so for me for example when I started I didn't have really anywhere to like go off of I had just watched Death Note um, the anime and I was like, okay, well, I want to collect Death Note at least. So if that's the case, and you just read, you know, you want to start there, start there. That's a very eerie, very easy um, starter series to start. It's twelve volumes, six if you get the if you get the uh, the black editions. Um, very easy to start collecting, and you kind of just go from there. I will know that shelf space becomes a big concern also down the line. So I would try to like plan out what you want based on how much shelf space you have. Uh, for me, I didn't do that, and now I have an, such an overflow of manga like on my shelves that I don't have room to build a third shelf, but I need it uh, to kind of put everything. So I have some things in storage, some things just are like hanging around. It, it, it doesn't look very, very nice at all, but that's kind of just what happened. So what I would say going forward, like I said, just start very, very basic list, maybe one or two series. Don't go for everything. Read those, see if you like them, kind of branch off from there. If you really like the anime of Jujutsu Kaisen, start there. Get those volumes. And then from there, you can kind of branch off on your own. Okay, well, what's similar to Jujutsu Kaisen that I might enjoy? Oh, Hell's Paradise. Okay, that's very, very good. That's kind of a similar, like, darker show. Let me try going for that now. And then kind of just go, like, one after the other after the other. And you have Demon Slayer. You have, you know, Vagabond, Berserk, you know, things like that. Um, definitely a lot easier than just going, I want everything all at once. And I'm just going to buy any volume that I see, like, potentially ever. So I would say definitely keep a list don't try to collect everything and you and kind of like use the space you have allocated for for your collecting to determine like what series you want to prioritize and what you're going to collect first so that's the first big tip i have hope that helps a little bit right so the next thing i have is something i already briefly kind of like noted but i wanted to elaborate a little bit further on on it and that's keeping a list of either a everything you have or b everything you want to collect now, I know in the beginning, keeping a list of everything you have doesn't sound like a big deal because you know where, like, you already know what you have. But as your collection grows, and I know personally from me doing this, um, as your collection grows, uh, you'll be at the store being like, do I have volume 12 of of this series? Like, do I do I not? I don't even remember if I have it or not. And then you might accidentally end up buying yourself uh, the same volume twice. I know I've never run into that problem personally, but I know it's definitely a thing that will definitely come up um, if you don't kind of keep track of it. Uh, very early in the beginning when I was like overwhelming myself with everything, I kind of sat down at the computer and made a list of everything that I wanted to collect. So I remember that list was like Haikyuu, Death Note, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, Hikaru Nogo were like my top priorities on like 
collecting manga. And then I kind of put a couple suggestions that I'd seen over the internet, like down in the bottom, just kind of keep them in the back of my head for the future. And then using that list, I was able to focus on those series, like hone in more. And I remember finishing those series for the first time on that list and seeing me like kind of like wipe them off the list as I kept going uh, felt so rewarding. And looking at that list now, nothing's on there that I started or one thing is actually, but like no, almost everything is like not on that list anymore. It's, it's just very, very rewarding to see. You'll feel very accomplished completing these series as, as it kind of goes. Um, you don't even need to print it out. You can just keep it on your phone. Google Docs is a thing. That, 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 that's where mine is. So if I'm at the store and I'm like, do I need volume six of Yu-Gi-Oh or do I need volume eight? I just pull up my phone, look at my list, see I need volume, let's say volume eight and 12. And I'm like, okay, no, I need volume eight. I can get it. I can, I can delete it right on the spot once I purchase the volume. And so I have it in my head and are ready to go for the next time. So um, definitely keeping a list is a very, very big way to keep yourself organized and kind of know what you have. It also kind of prioritizes in your mind what to collect first and what you're kind of going for more than others. So I always think it's a very good idea. And it's something that very, very helped me a lot uh, when I started collecting. Okay. And the next big thing I have is, is definitely one that... I wish I also knew back in the day. And that's keep a budget of everything, kind of like what, what you want to spend. This hobby isn't cheap. Some that I've learned the hard way pretty much through all of this. I can't even imagine how much money I've spent so far on all these on all these books. But keeping a budget is very, very good. And then it's hard, but what's harder is staying within that budget. So for me myself, my budget is just kind of like I refuse to pay over cover price per volume. Uh, I know some volumes are kind of like a little harder to find, you know, between out of print and out of stocks, which we'll get to that too. Um, so I don't like to go over like the $9.99 uh, price for a book. That's kind of where I stick to. And I've done very, very good at sticking to that. I've only bought in one book above cover price because it was out of print and I needed it for my collection. But that's kind of the way to start. Now, spending $10 on all these books can be very, very expensive. You spend $10 on a Death Note volume and you want the whole series, that's $120 on 12 books right there. That's a lot. So... It's very, very helpful to kind of use the internet and the resources and resources to help you kind of find better deals. Um, this was a godsend for me when I figured all this out. There's the Manga Deals subreddit. Uh, they will always post in there when like a box set's in stock or something's cheaper than it should be or a big sale's going on. I cannot think of how many deals I've gotten off of that site at all. Like, I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for them. Great, great place to be. Um, taking advantage of sales is also a big one. Right Stuff Anime is a very, very big um, anime online retailer where you can get a lot of the books below cover price already as it is. Now, the problem is that their shipping cost is a uh, $75 minimum to get the free shipping and their shipping before that can be very, very expensive. So unless you're buying in bulk, it's not very worth going on there. Um, they do, however, throughout the year have these crazy big sales where they'll bundle a bunch of volumes together for a very discounted price. And it just, it, it adds up beautifully. That happened to me at the end of the year. I spent $100, I think, and I've got the entire series of Horimiya, which is already like a 12, 13, 14 volume series. Um, and those are $13 a volume, not $10 a volume. And I got a big chunk of happiness, another series I've been trying to collect for a while, which was an absolute steal. Just the other week, I got, I got almost the entirety of Hell's Paradise, volumes two through like 10 for 80 bucks. Those volumes are $12 each. Um, so checking out sites like that are very, very big. Um, even in public, going to places like Target and Walmart, their books are slightly, slightly cheaper um, than the cover price that you would pay at, say, a Barnes & Noble or another like whole bookseller, like a specific bookseller. Um, I would say if you are planning on getting, going for a bunch of like newer releases as they come out, the Barnes & Noble membership is a very, very good idea. It's $20 uh, a year. You get 10% off every single thing you get. And then online, if you ever want to buy anything, they give you free shipping as well. Uh, and it's very, very quick. Things come very, very quick. I definitely recommend doing that. That was another one of the first things I did when I started manga collecting. Um, there are a lot of things out there, I will say. Um, using used book sites are, are a killer good place to go. I cannot tell you how much money I've spent on betterworldbrooks.com um, just picking up chunks of series is for below cover price, way below cover price. Um, a lot of them do come in as former library copies, um, but a very, very quick cleanup is all you need. You just need a bottle of Goo Gone and you just gotta peel off some stickers. It's not a big deal. I did a video on it, you can check it out. Very, very easy, definitely worth the price. I would not have all of Naruto or Bleach if it were not for those two sites. And I know I definitely paid below cover price for both of those like series is total. Um, Thrift Books is another online site you can use as well as Aid Books. And then if you're overseas, there's sites like Book Depository, 
um eight books again um that just have a bunch of bunch of books at like i guess use use book price i would say check your thrift stores um i've had not the best luck finding things in the past but um lately things have kind of been turning around you can get books there for like a dollar if they have them you know occasionally you'll have the person who donates like their stack of like stuff and they'll just sell them out there for like a dollar each i found the first five volumes of yu yu haka show not too long ago for a dollar each and that was before they got reprinted so um it was a steal and it was such a very very big moment for me when i found those there um another thing you should know are the terminologies here um out of stock and out of print now they're two very very easy things but they're very very different things so out of stock means that the series right now has just been sold out and that it's currently being reprinted it takes a bit for things to kind of get reprinted um, from what I've learned over the years, um, I started Yu Yu Hakusho collecting uh, year one. It is now year two, going into year two. And those series, those books are just starting to get reprinted. But out of print means that they're no longer producing that series like at all, like no longer making them. So for example, uh, the Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, the Yu-Gi-Oh!'s Duelist, Millennium World, and just regular Yu-Gi-Oh! single volumes that I wanted to collect, those are out of print. Uh, they do not make those anymore. They prioritize making the Yu-Gi-Oh! 3 and one Omnibuses instead now. So those books might raise in value and might not be the same price, you know, whereas a series like Yu Yu Hakusho or even Nana, which were out of stock for a very, very long time, were only out of stock, meaning that, that yeah, all the volumes are no longer here right now, but they're currently making more and they'll be here anytime soon. You know, it might take a year. It might take six months. You know, it's different depending on, on each series and the popularity of each series, but they will come back in stock. Patience is definitely a virtue when it comes to manga collecting, and it's definitely paid off for me in, in dividends. So very, very big on knowing those terminologies, and very, very big to keep a budget and controlling kind of like managing your finances based on like what you need and taking advantage of those sales, those online resources. And last but not least, a couple more funner things in terms of like collecting. Number one is huge. It's don't read everything right away. Um, you might think to yourself, well, why will I buy it then? If I'm not even gonna read it, it's gonna sit on my shelf. Well, what I've learned is that you always wanna have something to read. So if you just read everything you have as you get it, you're, gonna, you're, you're not gonna have anything to read. It's gonna sit on your shelf for a while. So someone told me once to kind of keep your collection at like 85 to 90% read. And we always have something fresh to kind of go back to. So once you read it all, it's just gonna sit there. And I've definitely taken that to heart. Um, there's a bunch of series on my shelf that I plan to read that I have not yet read because I'm just waiting in case, you know, I get bored or like I need something different to do for a day. And then once I finally get there, I'll be more than happy to read it. One Punch Man is definitely one of those series right now. 20th Century Boys is another that I kind of have a big chunk of volumes, but I'm waiting to read until kind of like I'm run down what I have already read. It's a very, very good idea. It keeps definitely keeps you going with the hobby. I know in the past I've like done collecting on different things and I kind of got burnt out very early or I got bored and I stopped. But manga, I haven't done that yet. This is the longest hobby I've had in a very, very long time in terms of like collecting. And I think it's because I, I don't read everything. I keep everything fresh in me. So it's very easy just to pick up something and just off my shelf and just read it and experience that. And it keeps me wanting to invest it and wanting to kind of read more and go for more. So definitely a good idea to not read everything. And then last but not least, which is the most cliche advice I can give you is have fun. Manga collecting can be very, very rewarding. Uh, finishing a series for the first time is just the, the biggest like rush you'll ever find or like seeing that a volume you'll be looking for comes back in stock finally is like just so hyped you can continue reading. I know for me with Q, um, that was a series I started very very early in my like manga collecting uh, journey and I didn't finish reading it until like almost like maybe like four months ago um, because it was just very hard getting all the volumes in and like getting all that read. But once I finally read through the entire series I felt like on top of the world. I was like this is great. This is like everything that I've kind of strived for. Um, network. Don't be afraid to make friends. I, I've made some really great friends because of this YouTube channel and because of like my, my, my like love for now anime and manga, like even in real life. And it's definitely like helped me grow as a person. And I'm very, very happy about that. Um, no other hobbies ever made me do that. Or I remember ever made me feel that way at least. So at the end of the day, it's a hobby, you know, you're here to read, experience some new series. You're here to maybe make a few new friends and just get that reward of accomplishment when you finish a series and finally can like read through a series or for the first time it's a fun hobby i love sharing my journey with you guys and it's one of the most fun things i've done in a very very long time so i hope all those tips help or at least any of those tips helped um if you ever need any more advice uh, we have a discord server now you can click right in the, right in the description below 
and you can join in. I'm always there chatting. You can always ask me a question. I'm, I don't bite, you know, um, I'm always here to help the community and I want to kind of give back as much as I can, let's say. So um, I'm always there to reach out if you guys need me. Um, if you guys have any questions or anything like that, feel free, you can leave it in the comments below and I'll answer you if I can. Uh, I will answer you actually. That's probably a better thing to say. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you guys again very, very soon for the next one. So have a great night.